Mesrop Mashtots was born in the year 360 into a minor Armenian noble family in the province of Tehran. Being born into a noble family meant that his father, named Vardan, could afford to give Mesrop a great start to his academic career. On top of learning his native Armenian language, he was also extensively taught how to both read and write in Greek as well as Persian. One of his teachers was none other than the leader of the Armenian Episcopalic Church, Nerses the Great. Nerses was only the second man to earn this rank, as this church was only just created about six decades ago by King Tiridates III. I made a video about him linked here, but for this discussion, all we need to know about Tiridates is that he is the first ever king to convert to Christianity in 301 AD. Tiridates not only converts himself, but also tries to impose his new religion on his Zoroastrian Armenian subjects. Their conversion is much more difficult of a task that is still being undertook by the Armenian church during Mashtots' life. After Mashtots finishes his studies, he is recognized by the current king of Armenia and descendant of Tiridates, King Khosrov IV. Khosrov appoints Mashtots to the role of one of his secretaries. Mashtots probably worked for him for the duration of his reign, which only lasted from 387 to 389. This role would have seen him doing day-to-day -day tasks for the king that may have been too mundane for him, like scribe work and accounting. After Khosrov IV lost his kingship to a relative, it appears that Mesrop also lost his job. In 389, Mashtots and a few of his friends left the Armenian court to join a nearby monastery in order to become monks. Here at this monastery, he committed himself to his celibate life of fasting, praying, and studying of the freshly written scriptures. Mesrop Mashtots was one of the few Armenians with the ability to read the Holy Scripture because it was written all in Greek, a problem that he would soon come to solve. Mashtots, who was one of the best educated monks in Armenia, was tasked with converting the Zoroastrianists that still persisted in the south of Armenia. So he preached and he preached and he preached, but his efforts were always in vain, only receiving a few of the many potential converts. The crowds of Armenians would listen to his sermons, but how could they be so sure that he wasn't making up these speeches and sayings from a book that they could not read? The problem was clear, and there was two ways to find the solution. Option one would be to teach all the Armenians how to speak and read in Greek or Syrian language so that they could read the Bible. This would be an arduous and time-consuming task, and one that not all Armenians would be open to. Option two would force Mashtots to use all of his intelligence and creative knowledge to make an Armenian alphabet, from which he could then translate the Bible. This would be much easier to teach to Armenians, and so he set about creating a brand new alphabet for his people. But how do you create a new language from scratch? Mashtots decided to base his alphabet on the Greek alphabet, but put his own Armenian twist on it. Mesrop needed money in order to travel to Edessa, so that he could further study Greek and fully understand the concept inside of alphabets like symbols, vowels, and consonants. But Mesrop was just a monk, so he was forced to petition for funding from a few different sources. First, he went to the current head of the Armenian church, Isaac, who saw the promise of this mission and granted him not only permission, but students to help him in the journey. But money was still a necessity for travel, so he went to the wealthiest man in Armenia, the king. The current king was the brother of Khosrov IV, who Mashtots had served some decades ago. His name was Vram Shapa, and he conceded, granting Mesrop with the proper money and materials to conduct a linguistic research project that would change Armenia forever. Mesrop began his journey and arrived in Edessa by 404, taking half of his students there with him. He sent the remaining students to nearby Samosota, where they would conduct their study. His Samosota students consulted with a local monk who gave them guidance, while Mesrop consulted with Daniel, a local bishop. Only a year or less of studying would see Mesrop's contingent of students return to Armenia by 405. There, they presented the Armenians with the new alphabet, made by and for Armenians. The script consisted of 36 symbols that included 28 consonants and 8 vowels. It was such a perfect fit that only two extra symbols would be added to it, but much later. Now the next step would be to teach the Armenians this new writing system. Mashtots would choose the Amaris Monastery to be the classroom from which a written language would be learned, read, and eventually written out. With his native people slowly learning how to read from this script, it would be the job of the multilingual scholars to translate the Bible and other Greek texts. The first words ever translated into Armenian are very fitting and reads as follows, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. With the translation of the Bible, the literacy rate in Armenia slowly climbed, so why not give the people more to read? So Mesrop sent his students out into the world from Constantinople to Edessa and all the way to Athens to Alexandria and everywhere in between. These students gathered as many Greek texts as they could find, which they then translated into Armenian. 
So Mesrop spent the next 35 years, from 405 to 440, teaching, translating, and writing, all in the Armenian language that he had invented. In 440, Isaac, the head of the Armenian church who had sponsored Mesrop, died, leaving his position wide open. And who better to fill this spot than Mesrop Mashtots? Unfortunately, the 80-year-old Mashtots would die six months into this role. He is buried close to the church where he used to teach Armenian, and his grave is still visited to this day. Now, he is known as St. Mashtots. Now, I really don't want to start a war in the comments section, but I don't think St. Mashtots invented the Georgian alphabet, but I do think his Armenian alphabet had a huge impact on the Georgian one. The Georgian alphabet was most likely developed under King Mirian III of Iberia, who you can check out in this video I have linked here. It seems like it developed on its own, but borrowed plenty from the alphabet created by Mashtots. I feel like it would be more appropriate to call these two alphabets cousins, with the Armenian one being the older cousin that the Georgian one emulates, but in its own special way. Mesrop Mashtots is the kind of person that only comes around every once in a while, with the brain of a scholar, the creativity of an artist, and the work ethic of an ox.